You're listening to the Study Clicks podcast, your number one source for junior cycle and leaving cert tips. We make exams easier. Welcome back to the Cyclics podcast. We have another special edition of the Cyclics podcast. We're hoping to do more of these where it's me, Nessa, who's usually on the Cyclics podcast with my sister Emer, but we've invited a teacher on, an expert in their subject to talk about how exactly to do well, what little kind of tips and tricks, how to make the most out of the subject, how to basically improve your grades. So today I have on with me Jamie Dockery, who is an English teacher. He wrote a a junior search English guide, as we know, like the syllabus in in English for junior cycle was uh, recently updated or there's a new syllabus so we he wrote a guide for us on study clicks and then he's basically this podcast is going to be just like an audio version of this guide and he's going to give us his tips so jamie welcome to the cyclics podcast nessa how are things it's lovely to talk to you it's great absolutely it's lovely to have company isn't it it's lovely someone to talk to <laughs> indeed indeed so jamie just i i had linda on last week to do home ec and the first question i asked her i'll ask her the same of you as well just to tell us a bit about yourself and your background and your history with english as a teacher sure absolutely um i'm a, a proud roscommon man um i graduated with from a, a with a liberal ba uh, in english and history from mary Macklin college uh, university of limerick in god uh, 2008 which feels like a long long time ago now long i'm, I'm getting old i think um <laughs> it'll seem long to the people who's listening but it's not that yeah long. <laughs> your god i see some of them are even born uh, <laughs> which is a little depressing um <laughs> I went on then and did a, um, a master's in modern English literature um, in, in Mary I as well and qualified as a teacher from Trinity College in 2010. So um, I started my, my teaching career in St. Nathan's College in Balhadrine and I spent 10 very, very happy years there with some, some great students and great people. And I'm delighted to say that since um, September of last year, I've been um, part of Tyndall College, Carlo. Um, so I've I've moved to the southeast and um um very 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 happy um to be working as well with study clicks for the past couple of years mm-hmm. working on content for for you guys for the leaving cert and junior cert um, English and history um really love English and uh, you know I suppose that as a, as a teacher I would hope that um if I could instill even a little bit of my passion to my students that would be what I would consider a, a job well done. I find that especially with like English and history teachers, like you think that like obviously all teachers have a bit of a vocation, but like especially English, you know, there's a big passion there for or like wanting to inspire the creativity in the students and having that same love yourself for the subject. Um, but that's brilliant. So I'll kind of get into the um, the bones of the podcast then. So this is specifically junior research English, how yes. to do well in it. Um, I think a good place to start is just uh, in how the subject is assessed. Um, can you make kind of just break up like the overall grade in your junior search cycle? How is it made up? So, yeah. So I suppose the, the first thing to note is, and we can get into more detail maybe later on on these the first thing from from the students' point of view that they might be concerned about will be these these classroom based assessments. So your your two CBAs that some students will be used to now at this stage. But you've got your oral presentation in second year, your collection of texts, which sounds very important and official, um, in third year. But I suppose the main thrust of the grade comes from the, the final exam that you'll do in June, which is ninety percent of your overall grade. Um, before that, you'll have a little assessment task based on your second CBA, which is 10% of the overall grade. Um, so, and then in, in terms of the way that it'll it'll look, I guess, um, in terms of its reporting, you know, you, you will get a, a, a junior cycle profile of achievement, which will outline how you did in your two CBAs. And then also a, um, what do we call it, a grade indicator um, in your in your exam. So whether that's a distinction or a higher merit, merit, et cetera. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's different from your H ones and your H twos and all that. Um. So can we get into maybe a bit more detail about the CBAs? Um. I suppose like they've been here for a while now, so students kind of know if you're in second year or third year, you've one done already. But uh, what does CBA one and CBA two involve? Yeah. Now they sound they sound scary, and I, I think when they were introduced a couple of years ago, even. 
our, ourselves as teachers were a little bit unsure about them, but actually they've been something that have really, really added to the to the classroom atmosphere and to the subject as well. So CBA one, so classroom based assessment one, is your oral presentation, and it, which again sounds very important, very fancy. All it is is where you're speaking for anything that you want so sp- to talk or present on anything that you want for about three minutes, um, and you will you know do that in front of in front of the class and with your with your teacher. That'll be usually recorded. Um, but you'll get a, a couple of weeks in the run up to that to, to choose your topic, to to practice it, to write up. A lot of students like to do PowerPoint presentations or to do something a little bit different with it, make a speech, for example. You'll have time to practice that and prepare it with your teacher before you actually have to deliver it then um, in front of in front of the class or, or a group of, of students. So that's your, your that's your CBA one. Your CBA two then is if you can imagine that throughout the, the, the three years of your junior cycle course, you're, you'll be writing an awful lot of things. So whether it's diary entries, short talks, um, writing short stories, personal essays, all the things that you write should really be collected together. And then sometime in third year, you'll present your two or three best pieces, whatever you think are best examples of your work um, to your teacher. And then they'll so generally what happens then with the with the classroom based assessments your teachers and if if you're lucky enough to have a, you know a large english department in your school those teachers will get together um and and i guess decide on the grade indicator for that whether your work is you know um in line with expectations or whether it's something that's really really exceptional and the teachers will will decide on that based on the criteria that they've been given and based on the other work that they have in front of them Okay, brilliant. And then with C- CBA2, like you mentioned earlier, there's an assessment task that's then part of your overall grade, is it? It is indeed, yes. Yeah. So um, what what usually, now it's it's with the way that things have been over the last couple of years, um, this has kind of been not something that has in, embedded um, in the classroom just yet, but there is an, what we call an assessment task. So what you'll do is you'll fill out a little booklet during class time um, that will make reference to and use some of the material that you've handed up as part of your collection of texts. Now, again, sounds very scary, but it's very, very nice and very straightforward. So f- usually what they give is, for example, some what they call stimuli or just stuff that you have to watch or read. And it'll usually be people talking about how they write. So it could be famous writers or students talking about how they come up with their ideas, how they put their writing together. And then you are asked to reflect on that. Um, You'll also pick an example of some of your work. You'll write, let's say, for example, a paragraph into your booklet and um, discuss how you put that piece together. So maybe where your ideas for this piece came from, what you changed from your first to your second draft, um, what features do you think make it a good piece of writing? Uh, and that's something that sounds a lot more um, scary than it actually is by the time you get to, and this will be you know, much, much later in, in third year, usually around Easter-ish time in third year, you'll do this. Um, and by that stage, you'll be very, very comfortable with the idea of discussing your work. So it's, it's nothing to be, to be afraid of. That gets sent off, that little booklet, it gets sent off um, along with your exam that you'll do in June. And that'll be graded by the, the State Examinations Commission, along with your actual um, junior cer- junior cycle exam. So that's where that, that extra 10% comes from. Perfect. And do you any, have any little tips on how to just uh, approach the CBAs or do you know how to get the best grade indicator that you can? Yeah, so the, the, big, the big thing for CBA 1, which is your oral presentation, would be prepare as well as you can you do have a block of two weeks that'll be given over to it and as a teacher I can always tell the students that took the time thought very carefully about the topic that they wanted to choose you know those who go and practice it is what I'd say so you you have your text for something that you want to say go and practice it practice it at home and be it in front of the mirror or to whoever you have at home maybe practice it in class to the person who sits beside you definitely go through that maybe even re- record yourself on your, your phone or your ipad or whatever and watch yourself back and see you know was i making eye contact with my audience was i speaking clearly enough and actually as i speak to you now Nessa, i'm going through this in my head am i actually doing these things as well and um, you know practicing the actual speaking out loud because it is a scary idea of having to stand up 
and, and speak in front of your classmates. So try and get yourself used to used to that idea. Mm. In terms of CBA2, the collection of texts, what I would say is absolutely draft and redraft your work. So what I mean by that is don't just hand up your first version of, let's say, a diary entry. Bring it to your teacher. Ask them, you know, what can I do to make this better? And and they'll be delighted to tell you. Take your teacher's feedback, put it into action. And remember, it's your teacher who's going to be looking at this piece of work along with their, their colleagues to, to come up with your grade indicator. So whatever they tell you to do in terms of your second draft or your third draft, go ahead and do that um, and, and get into the practice of trying to improve your work. And it's it's the students who... I guess, take these CBAs seriously. They're the ones who will get the, the, the really, really good grade indicators, the above expectations or the exceptional. And, it, you know, how nice would it be to see on your junior cycle profile of achievement, you know, those, those above expectations, those exceptional sentences um, for your grade indicators? Yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, CBA 1 in particular sounds like something that would have been very useful to me uh, if I had done it, like in college. Like, I think with the new junior cert cycle, they're thinking of, like, these are actual skills that you're going to be using later. And I know some students might get frustrated, like, oh, we're not, it's not going towards, like, my final grade or my indicator. But, like, these are all skills you need after school. And it's always a, a good thing to work on them. It's you're never dead, a waste you're dead of time. right, Nessa, because yeah. my, my feeling would be, you know, not every student that I, I, I will have in front of me in the classroom is going to always love poetry for example as much as I will and and but every student and every person at some stage in their lives is probably going to have to make some sort of speech or talk it could be in a sporting context it could be at a wedding something like that family event everyone at some stage is going to have to speak in front of a group of people so if this is something we could practice in school I think it's it's absolutely brilliant yeah, it's brilliant. It's a great thing they brought in. Uh, like I said, I wish I wish they brought it in sooner. It could have helped me a little bit get the practice in early. Um, so yeah, I'll move. I'll move on from the CBA. So actually, something I wanted to say um earlier on, but I suppose it ties into the CBAs as well, is that well, the the purposes of this podcast is that it's something. It's the junior cert English guide, and it can be listened to whatever year year you're doing the junior cycle, whether that's you know. 2023 or beyond um but there are adjustments in the 2023 exams um so chances are if you're listening to this and you're doing the junior cycle and that you're just to be aware that there are changes and that uh, we'll link the the adjustments in in the bio but there's not a huge amount um but then moving on then i suppose um just uh the next question i had on my list was just tips for english as a subject in general because English, it's very different to a subject like biology or, um, you know, history where there's like dates to learn off or parts to learn off. It's 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 a kind of an unstudiable subject. So what are your tips for studying it in that way? And I'm using quotation marks now because <laughs> for the listener. So, yeah, I, I, I guess sometimes students just have an idea in their heads. You, you're either good at English or you're not. Mm. Um, and I, I would I would um, respectfully disagree with that. There are certain things that, that a student can do to to improve their grades when it comes to the studying of, of English. Um, the, the first thing I would say is that, OK, you're going to be doing an awful lot of different texts. So be it, for example, your novel, your play or some poems and one thing that you could certainly do and, and revise and, and study are those texts. So the idea of being familiar with your, with those texts that you do in class. So, for example, you know, know about the key moments. So know about how the, how let's I'll use a novel as, as an example. Know how it begins, know how it ends. And then whether there are any important moments in the middle somewhere that affect the plot or tell you more about the characters. You should definitely be familiar with those things. Um, another thing that you, you you should be able to do in, in terms of the studying studying of English would be to use adjectives to describe characters that you come across in your texts. So an adjective being a you know a descriptive a descriptive word, and um, how would you describe them? Um, in terms of your your poetry, poetic devices all day long till the cows come home. You need to be from, comfortable and familiar with your your poetic devices. And that is something that you can absolutely go on and revise and, and study. And then the, the last and the, probably the key um, piece of advice I would give, more so probably for, for third years, um, would be to practice answering exam questions from your exam papers. 
Mm. Usually teachers will tell you to get exam papers around the start of third year. If they don't, go and get them yourself and definitely go through practicing um, questions from the exam papers. Why not give them to your teacher to correct? I'm sure they would be delighted to, to help you in that regard as well. That's great. Um, that's something you touched on there, which is another question I wanted to ask you, is there's a lot of students that probably feel like they don't have a natural ability at English, that like some people are better than others. And like you said there, you don't necessarily agree. And I think I'd be the same. Like if you if you practice enough at something, you can you can get good at it. But uh, yeah, that, would, that, that was basically my question. Like, what are your tips for those students who, who don't feel like they have that natural flair when it comes to English and maybe creative writing? Yeah, I, I suppose the, the first thing really um, is, in, in particularly for students who, who maybe feel that they struggle with writing is, and I, I, don't, I don't want to give our listeners a, a kind of a cop-out answer, but the, the advice I would give is to actually start writing. Mm. Um, <laughs> even if you think, even if you're thinking in your own head, you know, what, you, that you're not happy with what you're writing or you think it's, it's silly or daft, or whatever, just get it down on the page because that's the, that's the first way that you can um make a move towards improving your writing absolutely get feedback from your from your teacher read whatever you've written out loud even just to yourself but better again to people at home and see if they understand the story that you're trying to tell if if i was to give one piece of advice to any of my students and this would be to a first year on their first day or a higher level leaving their student on their last day my advice to improve your 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 um, ability in the subject of english is to read now, ideally, yeah, novels, brilliant. That's what we want. But really anything, whatever you're into, whether it's, you know, um, sports reports in the paper, music reviews, magazines, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is you're into, find a book, find a magazine and and, and read it. Um, students who tell me that they don't like reading, I always, and I know it's a really teacher answer, but I've always just tell them, you just haven't found the right book yet. And um, mm. reading and books are your way into this into this subject. If if you're a student who maybe struggles with with um, reading and, and any particular specific aspect of that, for example, students maybe with dyslexia and things like that, audiobooks um, are your best friend as well. And I can't recommend audiobooks enough as well. I use them myself. I use them in class. They're really really helpful for for students as well. And by by reading and listening to audiobooks, that's going to help your your language and your expression absolutely. But also your ideas for stories that when it's put up to you in an exam, um, you know, to come up with ideas that you'll have a bank of stuff that maybe you, you wouldn't even realize it at the time, but you can pull an idea out from something that you've read or heard already. That's brilliant. That's something that I sometimes students ask me for tips on how can I maybe do it if they're wanting to study over the break, but or, or over the summer when there's not much going on. English is a great subject that you can do uh, to prepare for over the summer because reading is just a general fun hobby that you can do and like you said there's 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 so many genres and different media formats that you consume as just as long as you're consuming words and sentences you're improving your English absolutely and something that I recommend as well for people to get into writing is there's uh is just journaling every day or like just a little bit just writing about your life is very fun because um well see I, I talk about this on the podcast a bit because it's one of my hobbies and it's just even if you just write a little bit every day it's very fun to look back on and that's all contributing to your English ability um absolutely absolutely yeah so that that's a that's one of my tips anyway and there's there is a, a thing you can get like in in bookshops like Easton's and things called a line a day diary which is it's close to zero commitment you just have to write one sentence every day and that could be your kind of um a starting point for maybe kind of getting it into writing a bit more but um that's that's something i've recommended in, in the past i think it's great I might try that myself uh, <laughs> yeah there's there's lots of ways of like improving your english so don't like you said don't dismiss yourself as and your ability like there's lots of ways to improve yeah, so that's kind of that kind of tied into another question I had, which was like, what are your tips for improving your English outside the classroom? And that's basically it. Like, there's so many different ways to read and write outside of your learning. Is there anything else you could add to that? Or the, I would I would just hammer hammer home absolutely the 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 reading the the audio books and the you know and, and I loved I loved your idea there of the of the journaling and maybe I suppose having having fun with with the subject as well because you know look at I know we're here to talk about. The, the junior cycle exam and all of that but um 
really I, I, I got into teaching to try and make students fall in love with the subject. So, you know, absolutely find find ways of having fun with English because it, it's such a lovely um, it's such a lovely subject. And, and um, you know, um, I always feel like if, if a student has that love of reading, there, there's there's you know, they're never really alone when you have a book and there's always something there for you. You know, any any emotion that you've ever experienced, you'll find it in a book if you can't put words on it. You know how you're feeling at a particular moment, whether you're feeling you know ecstatically happy or or under pressure or stressed, and you can't put words on it. There is a writer out there who can, and and you know maybe they'll help you in those ways as well. So it's a really really lovely subject to to um, have a passion for. Yeah, that's brilliant. That made me think us as well, actually, when it comes to around exam time and when everyone comes out of junior cycle English or leaving cert English, it's one of like the first exams. And it's always the most crack to talk about because people like just talk about the absolutely mad thing they wrote about in their essay or this like ridiculous article that they all had to write up on. Like you don't get that. You don't get that crack with like history because it's all the same. You know, there's something different with English every year. And they, like like you said, it gets pe- people can be as creative as they want. Like the examiners are just seeing different things and it's just an enjoyable subject. So, yeah, like you said, have, have a bit of fun with it. I'm trying to come back to I have a list of questions here and I, I keep losing my place in them. But oh, yeah. So I had kind of I tips for outside of the classroom. But then I also had a question about do you have any tips for making the most of uh, in classroom learning like how do you how can you get the most out of being in in the class with your teacher and benefiting from that how do you engage that's a that's a that's a really good question um and I, i'm going to give a, maybe a, a very teachery teachery answer and you know i i'd appreciate that look at it, it's very very hard sometimes you know you will be tired and it could be last class on a friday but you know my advice here is the i guess um aspirational um you know if you could do this even in most of your classes you know you're 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 on to a, a winner i suppose the first thing that i would say is to don't ever be afraid to you know always take notes even if it's if it's not you know if you're a student who really really wants to to reach your potential in this subject sometimes yeah we'll do some note taking in class but but oftentimes we're discussing something don't be afraid to take a note of something if if something strikes you that you might want to come back to or you heard the teacher say something that you think was um you know worth remembering take a quick note of it down somewhere um that would be that would be the first thing to take as many notes as possible i always remember i had i was lucky to have some some brilliant um teachers in in the Mars college in Adelaide where, where i went to to school as a student and um sometimes so we would do we would do a poem for example and and I remember when Mr. Kinnan, my English teacher, would go through the poem, I would understand it perfectly. And I would be, ra- in, in, you know, uh, um, wrapped up in this in this in this poem. And then um, but I wouldn't take any notes. Mm. And then I'd come home and I'd have questions to answer and essay to answer on it. And all the good stuff that my teacher had said and all the brilliant knowledge he had given me was gone. And I'd then be trying to go through the poem line by line, go, what did he say this was? And what did he say this was? Because I hadn't taken the notes down on the on the on the poem. Um so that would be the one thing that I would I would certainly say is you can't take enough notes. Even even the things that you understand at the time, do try and, and write it down. Because again, remember you have so many subjects and everything that things can pop out of your head um, if you don't write write them down. So as many notes as possible. I would also say as well, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, if you don't understand something in class or you want to get clarification on something, don't be afraid to put your hand up and ask a question. If if you're maybe natu- a naturally shy person, um, maybe you know a lot of a lot of schools now use things like Microsoft Teams or other platforms where there is an avenue there for you to ask your teacher a question about something. And um, so definitely make use of that. If you have um. Again, you have a lot of uh, texts to get through in in junior cycle English. You know, you have a play, you have a novel, etc. Um, if you're lucky enough to have your own copy of your class novel or your class play, have it in your bag. You know, if you get a free class or you've a, you know a free moment in school, don't be afraid to take it out and and have a read of it. Um, you know, because the more times you read through a text, the better you're going to understand it and the better you're going to remember it, so that you can you know take out better examples in an exam and the last thing i'd say and it's again it's going to be so teachery but do your homework Mm. Um, (laughs) and it it really does matter you know 
I can, I'm sure I can speak for all my 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 um, teaching brothers and sisters when I say that we don't give homework just because we want to rob you of your evenings um, or because we want to punish you or torture you. The homework is used as a way to kind of you know reinforce what we've done in the classroom and and for us to check as well how well you've understood something. So do um get into get into the habit of of doing homework and taking your time with it and doing well and i i do promise you that, that will um you know make the subject a, a much easier for you that's brilliant yeah absolutely that, that's something i probably didn't appreciate enough in school and it's saying it now like homework is part of studying it's part of preparing you for exams they all have the same uh, end goal so yeah just try not to have a kind of a negative attitude straight away going into homework because it's all supposed to benefit you in the long run um, yeah, and don't be don't be afraid as well if uh, what i try to do in my own classes and i know many teachers do this as well we'll try and start the homework in the last 10 or 15 minutes of class because what that means then is you know you have as a student have a chance to maybe ask a question that if you didn't understand something or you're not sure what what exactly a particular question is asking you to do that you have that chance to to ask the teacher in class so definitely make use of that too yeah absolutely that is one thing and myself and Emer are talking about this on the podcast we recorded recently about things we regretted about the time we were in school and obviously look it's very easy to look back on now as like we're out of school and we're like oh we wish we like spoke up more in class and engaged more in class and that could be hard when you're a teenager as well you don't want to be seen to be the one who cares like oh it's so like oh you actually want to do well in school like <laughs> you you think everyone cares but they more most of the time they probably don't and it's definitely will work out for you in the long run if you just ask the questions if you know if you have them don't be afraid like you said the whole with the wonders of uh working on teams and google classroom now as well if you're that bit shy and you wouldn't usually do that you kind of those avenues are available to you now so um what a, a wonderful age we live in <laughs> um yeah, exactly exactly or, um, this one is more of a, a practical one, and I was just curious to know if you had any tips. But when English, well, coming back to the stuff that you can study, something that you do have to learn off are quotes uh, from like your novels and your plays and poems and, and all that. Do you have any tips when it comes to memorizing quotes? Yeah, so I, I suppose the first thing I, w- I would say is that, and I know that often students get very, very worried about about quotes and. I do, I suppose, find myself often saying, you know, you must quote and quote this and quote that in class. What I will say is, if you're someone who is really, really worried about memorizing quotes, the, the first thing I'd say is that, look, at they're not the end all and be all. OK, and um, you can also make reference to things that happen in the novel or the play, not just, you know, the exact word for word quotes from the text. Um, but look at if you're someone who 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 finds learning things off by heart easy, brilliant, fantastic. And um, but again, remember if you if you over rely on quotes in in an answer, you know that's going to hurt you as well because you should be using your own words and then the the quotes from the text just back up what you said. So that's the first thing I, I would say. But absolutely, do try and learn them. So how would I how would I maybe um, what advice would I give to 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 do that? I guess what I used to do as a as a student was I would practice writing them out. So, you know, try and learn a quote, then close the book, try and write them out on, on a piece of paper. Even if you were to rip that paper up and put it into the bin again, that, that's really, really good practice. I'm a big, big fan of, of visual aids, um, you know, putting particular quotes on, on a poster, st- putting that somewhere where you'll see it, be it um, inside your school locker or on your desk at home. And, and the more... Um, you know, the more full of imagery, the, the more color you can put on these these um, visual aids, these posters, the, the better it's going to be and the easier it's going to be for you to remember. I, I remember hearing somewhere or reading somewhere um, some study. Um, I can't remember where, but that the mind finds it very difficult to, to memorize, you know, the, the the two colors of black on white or blue on white that, you know, that if you're just reading something from a book, but if you can make your own. Um, notes where they're colorful and visual and you're you're making a little bit of artwork around it and you don't have to be a Picasso to do this and um, it's going to help you to to make it easier to um, learn those learn those quotes so color is, is is everything yeah that's yeah the visual aids are a big one especially if that's 
you know uh how you learn as well a lot of visual learners out there um that's brilliant so i said i would come on to the, the written exam then so this is the one you sit in june it's worth 90 percent, like you said um can you talk us through like the exam layout and you know the marking scheme of that like where what can st- uh, students be aware of what 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 they're being marked on and what to focus on you know that kind of a thing yeah so th- this is the big one really um, yeah. we want to do as, as well as we can on our CBAs but when it comes to the actual exam itself it's it's 90% of your whole grade for English and it's in it's in one sitting so we've got a, a two-hour exam in in June and that's broken up and um, you've got your higher level and your ordinary level and it's just one paper okay and you've got 180 marks all together and there usually be some sort of, of theme um, so one common idea through all the exam were the different pieces of the exam that they've been inspired by. So I, I, I'm trying to remember, I think it was Hope maybe was, was last year's one. Um, you know, the theme of Hope and all the different, be it a poetry or an extract from, from novels, etc., were inspired by that, by that theme. Now, um, the thing with the new junior cycle is this. I can't tell you what's coming up on it um, because I don't know. I back in the old, back in the day I was able to tell you there'll definitely be a question on your novel there'll definitely be a question on 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 your on a poem this that and the other what they've done now with the junior cycle which makes it slightly trickier for students to to prepare for but makes it a much more rounded um and better exam is that they they're much more concerned now with a student reading and engaging with texts. Now, when, when I say texts, I, that could be anything. That could be get text. It could be a photograph, a poster, a cartoon. But um, we we don't exactly know what is going to come up on the exam. So we know that there'll be some sort of comprehending and responding to, to texts. Um, so what I would say to you is this, and I, that's all sounds very, very scary, but it's it's really, really not. So when we do a poem in class now, you may or may not get the opportunity opportunity to discuss that poem in the exam, but what we're actually doing is we're learning skills. We're we're not learning off answers on a specific poem. We're learning how do we approach a poem, how do we find the poetic devices, how do we how do we talk about the poetic devices, so that when it comes to an exam, it, it the the hope is that it it doesn't matter what poem they give you that you're so used to discussing poems and looking at poems um, and writing about poems that it won't throw you. So, so that's, that's, uh, and I, I'm not trying to give a, a wishy-washy answer and essay. It's, it's the exam is, 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 is quite a, a, an open book, so to speak. We know that there'll be um, what, what the, what the, the big wigs in the department call um, stimuli. Um, so stuff that you'll respond to. Um, but where where the guidance comes for the student from is inside the first page of your exam so it'll tell you inside the first page of your exam booklet what how many questions you'll have what topics they'll be on and how long how long to spend on each topic and wh- what marks are going for each topic and and that would be the guideline that the student will have um as they approach that exam there there'll be nothing on the exam that you won't have covered in some way shape or form in class but the specific things that'll come up we don't we don't have a way of of knowing and we just try to prepare ourselves for any eventuality okay well so a surprise on the day (laughs) i I, look at i I suppose it is um not to sound negative you could you could well spend your time um studying for example Romeo and Juliet or the Merchant of Venice but then you you don't always get an opportunity to to write about that play but what we're hoping again is as the teacher what I'm really doing is I'm teaching you the skills of um working with plays mm. so that it that you'll have those skills that will transfer into into whatever they give you on the exam so it's that's why I suppose practicing your exam papers, being comfortable with your with your texts, and knowing how to to um, discuss. I, I suppose knowing what makes a, a piece of writing good and bad are they are the things that are really and your poetic devices, of course, they're the things that are really going to help you in this in this exam. It's I'm I'm I can hear myself and I'm, I'm making it sound very very scary, but it, it it's really really not. It's 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 actually a lovely change that they've made to the exam because we're getting away now from 
you know, the learning of the, the stuff off and mm. the, the over-reliance and all that kind of thing. Yeah, that like you said, like, it's not that much sound scary. Everything in the exam is something you would have practiced in class. So it's not, you're not going to be thrown on the day, basically. It's just, it's more to focus on your actual skills and your ability. Um, yeah, and, the, and they've actually as well... Um, changed how the marks are reported so they're, they're they're a lot more generous in terms of the the different bands of marks and what you know that uh, what what it'll say on your on your um your your certificate of, of uh, achievement as well okay very good um so one of my last questions second last question was going to be when it comes to the written exam ex- itself what are your do's and don'ts yeah so i suppose in the in the do column I'd say absolutely come prepared and um, have your pens. I'm a big fan as well of, of Tipex rollers, have water and um, all the things that you're going to need to, to get yourself through those, those two hours, because it is, it is a long time and you're, you know, you're going to be writing for the vast majority of those two hours. So do come prepared with that. And um, I remember when I used to do, to do exams, I would be writing quite quickly and sometimes, you know, some of my letters might be might not look as clear to somebody who wasn't familiar with my writing so I used to go over it again when I had time five minutes at the end with a tipex roller and just kind of tidy it up a wee bit now look at it's not the end all and be all but it it kind of it would make things a little bit easier for the examiner and if you were able to make things a little bit easier for the examiner you might get some of those 50 50 calls you know is this is this answer seven or eight out of ten that kind of thing they might be a bit more um generous to you um, another thing I would definitely say to do is to, again, a really teacher answer, but to read through everything properly, especially that first that first page. So inside the cover of your exam booklet, it'll tell you exactly the questions, as I mentioned, and the time to spend on each um, question. OK, um, I would also definitely show your examiner that you've thought deeply about your your novel, your film, your poems, your play. The more detail you can give in your answers, but also then your personal opinions. Have an opinion. Do you like the character of Romeo, for example? Does he annoy you? Don't be afraid to, to talk about how you feel. Is, is there a particular poem that you that you liked? Um, why do you like it? What do you like about it? Does it remind you of something else? Really think deeply about um, the, the text that you're talking about and don't be afraid to show the examiner what you know you know you're, you've spent three years at this so give it you know give as much detail as, as possible if there was um something to say that not to do I would certainly not spend any more time on a question than is necessary and um, you know do look at the marks to see how, how much how many marks are going for something if you're spending more time on a five marker question then you are on a 20 marker question you know you're you're doing something wrong there okay mm. sometimes you have all the marks that you're going to get on a particular question so make sure you move on because there is a lot to do in that in that exam brilliant so that's that's everything to do with the exam my final question was just going to be do you have any final tips or anything that you want to like you said reinforce uh, that you said how important it is well i i suppose at the risk of of ending on a very cheesy note what I would always tell my students when it comes to this subject or any subject, you just want to be able to look yourself in the mirror and know that you did your best. That, oh. That's it. That's all that anyone at home is asking for. That any, uh, that's all that we as your, your teachers are asking for. After that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And don't worry about having any postmortems or worried about, worry about what you did say or didn't say. Once you know that you gave it your best, and uh, you know you, you worked as hard as you could if if you get you know a, a, a c or a b or an a or a d, it doesn't matter if that's your best you can be proud of yourself and and you know and, and well done that's so love i'm gonna ask all my guests to end on a cheesy <laughs> note that was that's such a nice uh note to end it on um so yeah that's that's all my questions that i had for you and just i want to say thank you so much again for giving up your time to do this i think I think those are absolutely great tips and they're definitely going to uh, help the the second or first, second, third years listening. I, there could be fifth or sixth years listening too. I think it kind of applies to uh, English uh, kind of as a, as a subject as a whole across secondary school. Um, but those are absolutely brilliant tips. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and just some kind of uh, information for the listener with regards to other resources is that um stuff that you've worked on is on study click so we'll have the guide basically the written version of this podcast i'll link that in the podcast notes if you're interested in 
reading back over it and of course we have loads of resources that Jamie's worked on that will be under Junior Search English the videos and notes page on Study Clicks so definitely use that there's a lot a lot of it is completely free so use what you can um but and just other kind of a general podcast bit of housekeeping that we always say is that if you enjoy this or you found it helpful rate and review give it five stars on spotify it helps us uh, become more visible and share it with a friend someone in your class you think it might find it helpful um but yeah i think that's everything from my side uh so jamie thank you so much i'll, I'll let you say goodbye unless you have anything you want to plug yourself if you're working on a tv show or <laughs> <laughs> it feels weird to end the podcast they always like that like do you have anything to no, plug? no no had you had you asked me um two weeks ago i would have mentioned that i'm playing the role of ned in um, um, Philadelphia Here I Come by Brian Friel, which was on in, in Kilkenny, uh, the Watergate Theatre in Kilkenny uh, a couple of weeks ago with Barnstone oh. um, Theatre Company. But apart from that, I have my my regular uh, Thursday night slot in the uh, Carlo Academy um, on Tola Street, where we, we do some we do some um, grinds in, in English and also um, history. If, if people are, are looking for that, too, um, you can find them on, on, on Instagram and all the other all the other social media uh, outlets um but yeah that's that's generally me and then just focusing now on on the christmas exams and the mocks and all the rest of it but nessa thanks very much for for having me i had a great time um i hope i didn't i, I tend to speak rather quickly when i'm excited about a topic so i hope that the students didn't find me too quick um but i wanted to wish the very best of luck to to everyone as well um with the christmas exams um, not to date this this um, edition, but also the mocks that are coming up in a little while. Uh, but more importantly, I suppose for the for the exams in the, in the summer, and um, there's loads of great stuff there on on study clicks in all the different subjects. So please uh, do make use of it. That's brilliant. That's the perfect note to end it on. Um, so we'll leave it there. Um, thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks again to you, Jamie. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye.